Hey guys, what's up? Good evening. In this video, we want to look at the Python tools for Visual Studio Code, which is actually not to be confused with Visual Studio. There was some confusion when Visual Studio Code came out because Microsoft had announced that like people associated Visual Studio with like the Visual Studio flagship integrated development environment, which literally like does a ton of stuff for you. Um, but that wasn't what was being released as open source and cross-platform. Visual Studio Code is. So there you know, there's no longer really a confusion in that, but I think when things were first being announced, like at least a year ago or more, uh, there was some confusion. But here is Visual Studio Code, and it's free to download. And once you run it, then you just have this. So it's a it's a bare bones text editor. So it's not trying to do everything for you, uh, but it's actually pretty good, and it's getting better with time. When you have the the project pulled up, you're going to notice this little weird icon. If you hover over it, you can see extensions. And it, by default, it tries to pull like popular extensions for you. And we're going to just type in Python. And these things change constantly because uh, they do get you know updated and stuff like that. So if you want to uh, ins inspect them or make this larger, you can. Now, one of the things too is like like I said, the the community can build these things. So like you can see like Taiwo, I'm assuming. Uh, I don't know if he meant to do this or not, but he says like makes it easy to write codes in Python. So I think that's automatically a red flag when somebody doesn't even write proper uh, English in the tool. I mean, that's kind of concerning, especially if it comes to like documentation of how to use it and stuff. But uh, we're going to use this one called uh, by Don and J. Main. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but we're just going to click install. Another thing, too, that you want to look at with these plugins is you can see that this one uh, probably should be on the top because it has 313,000 downloads. It has a star rating of a 4.5, whereas this one only has 30,000 downloads. And then this one with, like I said, the broken English only has 7,000 uh, downloads. So uh, it's pretty interesting. So we're going to go ahead and enable it. So it needs to restart the environment. All right, so now that we have that installed, there's a few things that we need to do. Whenever you're using Visual Studio Code, you need to have some sort of folder open. So I'm assuming the folder is going to be whatever sort of project root directory that you're working on. So you would actually go to your uh, just file menu here, and we're going to say open folder. And I'm going to actually put this in my um, Visual Studio. I have a folder here called Visual Studio Code in my projects directory. So I'm just going to open that. And then if we click on the, uh, the documents folder, or the explorer, show, it has the little documents icon, so we'll click on that. Uh, so this hasn't opened yet. At least I don't think. So obviously it is open. <laughs> I have the Visual Studio Code here. Okay, so we can click on new document. We're going to create a new Python file. So we'll just call this first example.py. And we're just going to do a simple print statement. So print hello world. Okay, and now that the file saved, you're going to know that um, we need to press uh, control space bar, I believe and it should load the extensions for future reference. It might stay loading for a second, but uh, this should actually show up a little bit. We might, yeah, there it goes. So well, damn, that's not actually doing exactly what I wanted it to do. I was hoping that the uh, the formatting or the syntax would be a little bit different with the coloring of it because I thought the print would be blue, but apparently not. Okay, so that's not a big deal though. Now that we have this, uh, one of the cool features of being able to use Visual Studio Code is to be able to use the editor that comes with it, so or so the debugger, so that, you know when you're actually uh, evaluating your code, you don't have to do print statements on stuff, you can actually just use the debugger to step through things. 
So in order to do that, we need to click on this little bug icon, which is the debug. And when we click on it, uh, a few things are going to happen. Uh, number one, if you've never actually executed the Python extension tool before, it's going to probably create a JSON config file for you. Uh, and that may actually happen when we try to run it for the first time. So let's go ahead and try to debug this. But before we do that, I want to actually hover to the left of the actual line number where we have print hello world. And we're going to see the little red dot up here. And we just want to click so that we can place that breakpoint. And you can see it actually tells you that you have a breakpoint set in this file, firstexample.py. So when we go to run this, uh, we need to select the environment that we're going to run it in and we're going to select Python. Now this is where the configuration gets set up and it, this is all the internal stuff that needs to happen in order for your, um, your Python extension to work. Now another thing that you need to keep in mind is that this means that Python has to be in, installed in your machine. So if you guys have never installed Python on like something like Windows, you need to um, go ahead and do that. There's installers out there. I have videos if you just search Google for Chris Hawks install Python. There's plenty of videos that I have on it and other people I'm sure have made other videos too. But Python has to be installed on your machine in order for this editor to actually work because it's obviously using Python to execute your file. So go ahead and close the launch JSON config file. That's just telling you that it's there and it shouldn't pull up again the second time around. So we're going to click play. Now this time you're going to get the little play icons at the top. It's going to run and now when it hits this yellow line it means that it's using a, a debugger. So what's so cool about this is that you can see everything attached to your local, uh, your, your well essentially this is the global scope here of your, your, your program being executed. So you can see some of the you know, built in features of you know, the Python language itself here. So like you know, the file and the doc and all that stuff, the doc string. Uh, but beyond that, let's go ahead and um, just press F10. You can see that there's a debug console, so you don't have to actually execute your program outside of Visual Studio Code. You can see that the uh, expected outcome is there. So let's go ahead and stop that real quick. Uh, just clicking the stop button. And we're going to do a couple things. We'll say X equals hello, and then Y equals world, and then we'll get rid of this uh, print statement at the top, and we'll say print x plus y. I really feel like that should be blue, but apparently it wants to have everything white. You could actually change the syntax color, by the way, if you wanted to. Uh, but here's something that's going to be relatively cool. Let's go ahead and place, uh, you know, we'll just place a breakpoint at the top and then we'll step through it. So when we go ahead and run this again, you don't get prompted for the JSON config the second time around, so that's pretty cool. Um, another thing too is you can see that this is, um, you know, this is the whole local scope of your project. So as we press F10 to go to the next line, you can now look at this and you can see X is now scoped out for you. You can see X has a value of hello and it's, it's a string. So you can copy the value or you can add it to a watch. So if X ever changes, um, then you have a watcher just, you know, monitoring that to see, you know, when and if that, that, that value ever changes. Uh, but let's go ahead and step down again by pressing F10. So now we have Y at the top. So hello world. Another thing too is when we hover over um, the X, in the actual project, you can see it tells you what the value is, hello and world. So that becomes extremely helpful when you have very, very complex projects and you're like, well, what is, you know, what does this string of args mean? Uh, you know, or what is, you know, what is inside this array and all that stuff. A lot of times, you know, in, in Python, we don't have the tools that something like C Sharp has, uh, but Microsoft and Visual Studio has done a pretty good job, I think, with this product. And, and to me, to be honest, it has me a little bit excited about doing Python development because I don't have to do it in the you know behemoth uh, that is Visual Studio. I can just do it in Visual Studio Code uh, because I don't need half the features in Visual Studio. So that's uh, I think it's pretty sweet. And obviously you can uh, do you know do more things with it. So like uh, let's look at a list here. I, I keep saying var. I'm so used to JavaScript and, and C sharp lately. Uh, we'll say uh, my list equals x y your mom and we'll put some ints in there too okay now if I wanted to I could just place the breakpoint there and while this is running I can now see that uh, well it stops at the top probably because of the previous breakpoint I don't know why but um anyway we have my list 
that's actually I don't know why it stopped at the top there. That's weird. Uh, but anyway, my list, um, you can look over here. You can see all the values that are in here. You can see how many elements there are. Um, you could also just hover over it and you can see it all inside of there. So I think this is an extremely helpful tool, guys, in order to be able to write Python. I know, I know a lot of you guys watching my channel like um, Python development, and I really don't see why I would use Atom Editor over Visual Studio Code if these if these um, you know these tools exist. I just kind of like the whole syntax. I feel like it it looks relatively clean and easy to use. So um, I'm just getting started in it too, so I can't really compare. Uh, but I have tried to deal with some of the Atom plugins and. Um, just haven't had a ton of success in getting like the debuggers working and all that stuff without a lot of hassle. Uh, but I really feel like this particular tool um, works really well, and at least in regards to the Python language. Uh, plus, you know, the console, the fam familiarity as well. You know, I'm coming from a Visual Studio environment, so there's that as well. So I guess take my advice with a grain of salt if, uh, if you really hate Windows. Um, all right, guys, that's it, man. Have a good night. Let me know what you think and take care. Bye.